Hi seniors, today we are going to talk about scholarships, where to find them, how to apply, um, how to know if you're eligible, and everything in between. So let's start with where do you find scholarship postings? As far as Holyoke High School scholarship postings, there are two places to find these postings, and I'm going to show you right now. What you're viewing on my screen is the 12th grade school counseling Google Classroom. If you're not a member, write down that class code right now and join it. You were all invited um, and had several opportunities to join. Um, so if you haven't done so by now, you're a little behind the eight ball, but you can still join. We're happy to have you. So you'll click on classwork once you're in the Google Classroom and you'll scroll all the way to the bottom. There's really other great stuff in here too. So if you haven't been in here, look around. Scholarships, and we have a link to the master list. Um, and I will open the Google Sheet. So it's organized into a um, Google Sheet, as you can see. We're gonna come back to this, but first I wanna show you the other place where you can find the scholarship posting which is on the Holyoke High School College Counseling website. So I usually just Google it. Um, Holyoke High College, no, wrong spelling, College Counseling. And you wanna find the one that says College Counseling, not School Counseling. And you click on it. This, Website also has lots of great stuff, like my YouTube channel with um, some recorded workshops, my appointment calendar, my office hours, um, upcoming events. But anyway, there's a link over here to college planning and financial aid. And if I scroll down until I get to the financial aid section, I will find the HHS scholarship list, which is going to open the same document that we're already on. So this is a document that you can view, um, you can't edit it. And this is where we post everything as it comes in. And so we post it as it comes in. So you may see things that are due in June, right? That are really far away. And maybe not that much for April. And you're like, man, that's not, there's not that many scholarships. We are going to continue adding things that are due in April because we get emails about scholarships all the time. And as they come in, we post them. So don't think that what you see now for April is all there's going to be for April. You have to keep checking back. So I'm going to explain the way that um, this um, spreadsheet's organized. Um, so basically, we post them as we as they come in. We do try and group them by um, deadline. That being said, um, they may not be exactly in order, but the Januarys will generally be grouped with the Januarys, the Februarys with the Februarys. I have hidden the ones with past deadlines. Um, so we can scroll down, we'll look at some in February, March. You can see there's a few in April, May. But again, I, I expect that we'll be posting even more that are due in March and April. Those are very common months for scholarships to be due. So in the first row, you see the name of the scholarship. And the second row, you're gonna see a brief description. In the description, we're gonna to touch a little bit on who is eligible to apply, as well as what the application might entail. This is a brief snapshot, so it doesn't cover all eligibility or all things you need to apply. For that, you, you've gotta click on the link, which we will do. But this is a good starter. So this one says senior with a 3.0. So if I'm a junior, I know that one's out for me. And if I have a 2.7, I also know that's out for me. Um, but if I have over a 3.0 and I'm a senior, I go on to the next criteria, demonstrated leadership or involvement in activities. A lot of scholarships say that. It does not mean you need to be involved in everything. It doesn't mean you need to be the president of something. If you're involved in some things, go ahead, give it a go. Now, if you don't do anything, right, if you're not involved in any club or job or um, sport or activity, that's probably not the best one for you. You should be involved in something. Um, and then this one has a very specific income, family income not to exceed $50,000 per year. You might have to ask your um, parents um, if you exceed that or not. And if you just live with one parent, you only need to include the income of the household. You don't need to include um, the income of the the other household if, if you go between two houses now let's say you don't have a parent but you have a legal guardian li you live with then you qualify because 
any student who has legal guardians who are not their parents, um, they, they're considered kind of an independent student as far as financial aid is concerned. So they would qualify. Um, and then we have the amount over here, 2,500. Now, let's say there's a lot of scholarships coming up and you're trying to decide, oh my gosh, which ones do I apply for? If I were you, I'd probably prioritize the ones worth the most money. So that's good to know. And usually we will put in there if it's awarded um, more than one year. So some scholarships will give you um, a certain amount of money um, per year. So this one's up to $10,000 per year. So I could get that every year I'm in college. And then we have the due date. Due dates are not flexible. So if the due date is passed, you, you should not apply. And also if the due date is coming up very soon, and there's a lot of pieces to the application. You probably don't have enough time. So let's go ahead and click on a link and just kind of see what, what these websites have. They're all different. You have to um, really dig into the websites to find the information. Okay, so they have a criteria sheet. In order to apply, make sure you meet the application criteria. Wow, a criteria sheet, that is so helpful. So I'm going to read through the criteria sheet. Now, number one, U.S. citizen or permanent resident. So some don't have that criteria, some do. And some are just for citizens. So important thing to look at. Um, GPA. Senior who, who will matriculate full-time at a four-year college or university. Okay, so if I'm going to HCC, I know that I'm not eligible. Leadership activities through community service or other activities. Um, an income of 50000 Okay, then they talk about what I have to do. There's an application. Okay, I'm reading it all. Okay. Must be typed or completed with black or blue ink. Um, we will not accept them filled out in pencil or red writing ink pen. Um, should be neat and easy to read impeccable okay in terms of appearance and legibility so that means you might need a proofreader because if they're looking for impeccable they're not going to consider you if you are not capitalizing the correct words if you are not spelling things accurately okay they must be mailed by march 31st they need to be received or postmarked now when they say postmarked by a certain date that means um the the you can't necessarily just put it in the mail that day because it might not be postmarked that day. If I'm running late and I need it to be postmarked, I'm probably going to get myself over to the post office to make sure it's postmarked that day. So if you need to send it via mail, if it's not an online application, it means you have to get an envelope big enough to fit all the papers, and you've got to put them in, and you've got to either mail it ahead of time or bring it to the post office to mail it. Um, official transcript. Okay, official means the high school has to send it directly to the committee. Now, they say that it has to be in a sealed envelope with the packet. Unfortunately, um, this year they will have to be sent separately. And so you will request a transcript from the high school and you will ask the high school to send it to this address. I'm going to show you how to do that in this session. And then a financial document. So they're asking for parent tax forms. Um, in this you have to read everything to make sure you send the right things a high school senior picture or a picture above the waistline oh it must be in color an essay okay and you they have a very specific topic um they want it double spaced etc um so if i don't read all the words i can be rendering myself ineligible and i can do a lot of work just to make myself ineligible. So for example, they don't want staples. Um, they want things like sensitive information whited out. So this is a pretty picky scholarship. Now this is due March 31st. And so if it is March 29th and I'm just reading this, I, oops, wow, okay, sorry. Sorry for that interruption. If it's March 29th and I'm reading all that, there's no way I have time to do all that and get it together. This is a pretty picky one. So you have to give yourself time to apply and decide if it's worth it. Um, if you're a good candidate, it probably is. And then they have an application checklist and um, here's the application form. So you can take a look at what it's asking you. I wonder if you can type in here too. Oh yeah, you can type, that would be nice. 
They ask for your activities, your community service, jobs, awards. Okay, so there you can go. Um, and so some scholarships will be online forms, so you don't have to print them. And others will allow you to submit them online, so you don't have to be going to the post office and getting envelopes and stamps and all that. Um, you saw that that required a uh, transcript, as lots of scholarships will, and they often want it sent directly from high school. So let's go back to, um, well, gee, how do I get that? So it's available in the same two places that we found the scholarships conveniently. So the Google Classroom, if we scroll up to resources, we have our transcript request form. I am going to view this material. Okay, please read this. Use this form to request a transcript or a counselor letter of recommendation to be sent to a college or elsewhere, elsewhere meaning a scholarship. Um, this email is only to have documents sent somewhere. If you're asking a counselor to write a letter, please do that through email. So let's say you need a letter of recommendation from your counselor. Filling out this form is not asking them to write a letter. You would have to email your counselor or text them or call them and say, hey, can you write me a letter of recommendation? Once they say yes, you can request through this form that they send it somewhere. You can also email them. Okay, when you open this, read all the words, okay? Um, that's what they're there for. And students who um, aren't reading all the words are likely to make mistakes on this and on scholarship applications. And you're going to disqualify yourself um, after doing a lot of hard work. You don't want to do that. So you're going to put your last name, your first name. You definitely need a transcript. If you need that, you can check that too. And if they offer you the option to email, that's best. But um, the one we just looked at did not offer that. So we need to send a hard copy in the mail. And then that address that was right on the application, I'm gonna type it out here, okay? So, you know, you can go back to this and you would have to go back and um, find that, uh, I think it was on the criteria sheet. And so I'm gonna um, write this down and then I'm gonna fill it out. Janice M. Scott Memorial Fund. Yeah, I would write it down or take a picture, um, which I'm not doing right now. Scott Memorial Fund. And I would put like comma, like whatever street it said, 333 or 33 Western Ave, etc. And um, polio M A O N O four. The address has to be, be complete. Okay, you have to include. Um, the name, the street address, the city, the state, and the zip code, okay? Or else it's, it's not going to be clear. So that is how you request the transcript. Now, this can also be located on the UGHS College Counseling page. I should just keep that page open. Again, college counseling, not school counseling. Um, oh, transcript request form. And I get to the same form. Okay. Um, okay, let's see. Now, um, what I recommend doing with this is doing file, make a copy. And um, you might want to rename it like my 2020 scholarships or whatever is the easiest for you to find. So you make a copy. Because once you have a copy, you can edit it and you can put it in whatever order you want. You can delete ones that you're not interested in, that you don't have time for, that you're not eligible for. So, you know, let's this is Elk's legacy is for seniors who are children or grandchildren for Holyoke Elk. So if that doesn't apply to me, I highlight that row. I click and I delete that row. And then I'm only looking at things that apply to me. Now, if you do make yourself a copy, remember, you are still going to have to go to, back to the original on a regular basis to find ones that are new. And you can either make yourself a new copy or you could just copy and paste the new ones into your document. Um, let me see. What else do I want to mention? Um, <laughs> So let's talk about common things that might be expected. Um, you're going to see essays expected. Um, if you can, use the college essay you already wrote or alter that essay a little bit to meet um, the criteria. Definitely save your essays because hopefully you can use them for more than one scholarship. You need to have a proofreader for essays and for scholarships um, because, like I said, a typo, a mistake um, doesn't look professional. And they're looking to award students who show promise. And part of that is being professional. Um, you're also going to see them asking for letters of recommendation. 
Um, because we're virtual, you are going to need teachers and or counselors to either mail or email those letters um, to straight to the scholarship program or give them to you and you can include them in your envelope. You know, that's really up to the teacher or the counselor. You can email your teacher and say, hey, I'm applying to these scholarships. Um, can you give me a copy of my letter so I can include it? Or do you prefer to send it to the scholarship program yourself? Give them the choice and then they can send it. Um, if you haven't asked um, for letters of recommendation yet, I would ask somebody for at least one so that you can send them to scholarships. Um, we talked about transcripts. Um, another thing you might see them asking for is an SAR or a student aid report. Now you get that in FAFSA. So if you filled out a FAFSA, let's see that. If you filled one of these out, um, which if you didn't, you should, um, you're just going to sign in, you'll log in. And when you go in, it's going to give you a few options. And one of the options is View Student Aid Report, SAR. You're going to click on that and it'll give you a PDF, which you can download and save. And you can upload it to scholarship applications. You can print it and mail it. Um, so that's you might want to go ahead and give that a try now. Um, and I think um, another thing I want to mention is that um, you're not going to need money for college if you don't get into college. So if you've been dragging your feet on those college apps, you need to do those. You really need to do those first and do a good job with them so you can get accepted to college. Um, let me point out a few big ones here. Um, these two are great red pine and yaki they're worth a lot of money but they are very specific um, they're looking for students with pretty high grades who are applying to competitive four-year colleges and they also have specific um, income criteria but if you're eligible i highly recommend those two they look at up to thirty-five thousand annually wow walter barr and william rooney also two really good ones worth a lot of money community foundation of western mass okay if you're only going to do one scholarship. This is the one you have to do because it is one application for over 140 scholarships. This is the one that we most see students getting. Um, it does require a copy of your SAR, like I said, your student aid report from FAFSA and a transcript, but you can upload those yourself. So you can download the SAR and then upload it. You can ask your counselor um, for a transcript or just you know fill this out and put in your own email and have it sent to yourself so that you can upload it um okay i was on this one um so yes community foundation write that down that that's a really big one um if you're a member of the holyoke credit union we have this credit union one and there's another credit union one the holyoke credit union definitely do those um the mass green and the do below if you're going to um partner colleges, like the Duplos for UMass, those are good ones. Um, the HCC Scholarship Foundation we, will be posted as soon as it's available. It's usually due in March. Any student going to HCC should do that one. That one is a little complicated. Um, so I would check anyone you plan on doing, get into the link now and be organized. Make yourself a to-do list. Sometimes right in the scholarship, it gives you a place to put in the email address of your school counselor or your teacher who has written you a letter of recommendation and they'll get an email, an invitation to upload it. You cannot be expecting them to do that a day before the scholarship is due. Um, they're working from home and um, they've got other things going on too. And so you have to give them a few days to be able to see the email and to upload it. Um, so start early um, so that you can prepare yourself and so that your recommenders can prepare themselves and so that we can send transcripts on time, etc. So I would start now, make yourself a to-do list, you know, scholarship name, what I need to include, what's the deadline, how do I need to send it. Um, so that's about it. And I am available for questions. My name is Miss Regali, and um, you can find my information just like you did, on, um, just like you found other things, right on the um, College Counseling website. You have my email address. You have um, my appointment calendar. If there's no appointments, so that you can just email me for an appointment. Um, my office hours with the link. Um, so I am pretty easy to contact. So um, we look forward to working with you and to answering your questions. Thanks for listening today and good luck.